All right, so welcome to our meditation sit this evening. Um, take a comfortable seat. And you know, you could be sitting on a mat, you could be sitting on a cushion, on a chair, whatever is comfortable for you. So we need to um, not try to tough it out when we're meditating. We need to just attend to the needs of your body so that you can manage your mind and your thoughts. Yeah. So let me start, this has become our, our practice, is to start with this prayer from Sean Korn. It's called Prayer Before Practice. So maybe just close your eyes and listen. Let us set our intentions today for our practice together. We pray for the highest and greatest good to be experienced here today for the benefit of all who are in the room. May this practice be an opportunity for awakening, feeling, and remembering to connect to our mind, body, and spirit uh, with kindness and compassion and ahimsa. May our resistance be transformed into surrender, our judgments into compassion and understanding, and our fear into faith. And may our faith carry us forward on our path. So may this practice be blessed as we connect deeply and find moments of peace. Amen. Okay. So we're going to do um, a couple of pranayamas and some physical practice to get us settled in our bodies. And then we're going to be focusing on our brains today. So managing the mind, um, acknowledging the thoughts and working through that. So the first pranayama I'd like to um, take us through is called Shitali. And um, I find this really calming. It really gets me out of my busy mind. So I thought we'd start with that tonight. And so how it goes, you're going to breathe in. You're going to make your tongue into a straw. Stick your tongue out. And you're going to breathe in through your mouth. And then you close your mouth. Put the tip of your tongue to that spot in your upper palate behind your upper teeth, your front teeth. And breathe out through your nose. So the in is through the straw. You make a circuit with your tongue in your mouth and breathe out through the nose. Okay, we're gonna add a couple more parts to that. You're gonna inhale with your eyes open and then exhale as you close the eyes. And the last bit is to start with your chin tucked to your chest. Take your inhale and lift your gaze and lift your head, drawing in through the straw. Close your mouth and your eyes and exhale the nose and bring the chin back down to the chest. So inhaling through your straw of a tongue. Close your eyes and exhale as you bring the chin back down. Inhaling through the mouth. Close your mouth, close your eyes, exhale through the nose, bringing the chin down. You can keep your eyes closed the whole time if you're okay with that. Make your breath as long and as full as you can. So really drink it in. Do three more rounds. And then just pause and breathe gently in and out through your nose, balancing your head on your neck. And 
And then open your eyes. A little more, a little calmer, a little more grounded. So let's get up for a few minutes and uh, move our bodies, okay? So get our, out of our heads and into our bodies. Just come up to standing up. Back up a little bit. (laughs) And look down at your feet. And lift your toes. Even if you have socks or slippers on, just lift your toes up. Try to spread your toes out. Plant the toes onto the mat. And then lean in so your toes are helping you balance. And then roll back through your feet. And maybe lift the ball of one foot up. And then put it down and then lift the ball of the other foot up. Let's do that again. So roll forward so the weight's on the toes. Maybe lift your heels up. And roll back down through your feet. Lift the ball of one foot. And then the ball of the other. And then just plant your feet firmly on the floor, whatever you're standing on. And travel up your body. So tighten up your thighs. Feel your kneecaps move up. Pull the navel in. Roll the shoulders into your back and turn the palms of the hands forward. And just take a couple of deep breaths here in mountain pose, pausing, feeling the connections in your body, noticing the parts that are talking to you tonight. Good. And then I'm just going to step back a little more so you can see a little more of me. We're going to take an inhale and open the arms up in a big V shape. And really lift up like you're feeling a nice stretch into your chest and your shoulders. Exhale and just let them float back down. Now inhale, open up again and maybe add a little back extension here where you open the chest. And exhale and let them float down. One more time. Inhale, big lengthening stretch. And exhale and bring that down. Good. Now take your left hand to your front ribs, your right hand to your back ribs. Okay, and then we're just going to swing the arms. Just let them lightly touch. Whoops. <laughs> Try not to knock down a lamp <laughs> or a curtain. And let everything twist. So kind of turn to the side. Let your feet move on the mat. Your hands can be connecting with your hips or your waist or your ribs. And then just let it slow down. You feel like a kid again. (laughs) Pick your shoulders up and back and down. Rolling the shoulders. Good. And then take the arms out so you're like a letter T. I'm going to move ahead so I don't hit the wall. (laughs) We're going to do another twist. So I'm going to turn towards the right, taking the left arm forward, and then turn to the front, and then twist the other way. And again, get your feet involved so your hips are turning. One heel's coming off the mat and then the other. And if it feels good, maybe go a little faster. Let the arms have some momentum. Okay, and then let that one slow down. We'll put the hands on the small of your back. So just supporting your lumbar spine. Maybe have your fingertips kind of touching the sacrum and then pick the shoulders up and back and into your back and now we're going to bend the knees slightly and push the hips forward and just keep that lower back neutral as you open into the front of the hips open into your chest eyes looking up squeezing the shoulders back maybe stay here for a moment and shift your shoulders left and right just getting some kinks out of the back And then slowly come up and we'll go the other way, taking the hands down your legs, carefully coming over into a forward bend, holding onto your legs if that feels better, or you can cup the opposite elbows and completely dangle here, letting the head go upside down, arms dangling from the shoulders. And really pay attention to your head and your neck. Allow the head to hang like a piece of ripe fruit. So no holding on to the head. Just gently turn your head left and right, kind of tractioning out your neck. Try to breathe deep into your back. Okay. 
And then to come out, we'll bend the knees, put your hands on your thighs, look ahead and bring yourself back up to standing. There we go. All right, let's come back down into our comfortable seat. I'm all pink. <laughs> Freshly oxygenated blood in my head, in my brain. That's got to be good. Got to be good. Okay. So I do have a bit of a script. I'll try not to read it, but I do want to make sure I hit all the, the right notes. Um, so in this time together today, we're going to explore more about our brains and actually about the electricity that goes on in our bodies and in our brains. Um, last week we did a little bit of tapping and then about a month before that we did a lot of tapping in one practice and that's what that practice of tapping is about it's uh, finding those meridians and the electrical passages um, through the body and that's why it is a powerful technique to be very um, calming and it does start to move us into alpha state we're going to talk more about the states of the brains in a moment so let's just do a little bit of the tapping practice, just uh, in case there's people here tonight who haven't done it before. And those of you that have and that really love it, here we go, we get to do it again. <laughs> uh, how the tapping works is we tap different meridians, different um, marma points in our body. And you don't have to tap hard, but it is a definite tap. And while we're tapping, I'll be reading some affirmations that acknowledge, um, what we're dealing with. So not avoiding the thoughts of the difficulties that we're all going through right now, but acknowledging them and being okay with them and seeing a way past them. Okay, so we start by tapping the karate chops. So you're going to hold one hand up, take the fingers of the other hand and tap. You can keep your eyes open or close your eyes. So I'll say the affirmation and you can say it to yourself after. Even though I feel a lot of anxiety about everything going on right now, in this moment, I choose to relax. Okay, let's switch hands. Even though things can feel really overwhelming, I choose to relax and feel safe now. Okay, so take your fingers up to the inside of your eyebrows, just on the outside of your third eye. You might just want to use two fingers on each hand. And so you're touching on your brow bone. Even though I know I'm holding a lot of stress in my body, in this moment, I can let it go. Bring your fingers to the outer corners of your brows, so the outside of your eyebrows on the bone, tapping. There's so much going on and I'm going to be okay. Okay, bring your fingers to your cheekbones, so not in the, not in the eye socket, but on the bone. I'm tapping here. It's normal to feel this anxiety and it's safe to let it go. Feel the vibration. You can just take one hand and the point is in between your nose and your upper lip. I'm just tapping here. It's normal to feel a lot of stress and it's safe to let that, that go too. Okay, take your fingers to the space between your chin and your lower lip. Ah, oh, it's safe to take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Now to your collarbones. Oh, you're going to really hear that, right? My mic is right there. Okay. <laughs> Use both hands. I acknowledge all my stress. And 
I begin to feel safe in my body. And then I'm gonna lift one arm and tap on your side ribs. The more I trust, the more my body can heal. Your other side. The more I relax, the more my body can heal. And come right up to the crown of your head. Letting go. Go. So on a physical level, that was connecting into um, meridian points, or areas where we have connection through electricity and through um, other pathways. I don't know about you, but I kind of have the physical muscle memory of each part that we tapped on. Feels a little more alive. So there's a figure of speech out there about having a brainwave. And, you know, what does that really mean? Well, we all kind of know what it means anecdotally that, you know, there's a moment out of the blue where you suddenly solve a problem or um, you have a great idea or, you know, you just, it's a, a catalyst for something. Um, well, having a brainwave is actually clearly understood now by scientists. And scientists have been studying um, the brainwaves for over 100 years. So we all remember those old movies with the contraptions on the heads and, you know, the Frankenstein and all that. Well, that's a reality. That is a methodology that is used in our, our medical and scientific world now. It's called EEG. Let's see if I can say this. Electroencephalogy. <laughs> I've been practicing this all day. I blew it. Electroencephalography. Encephalography. That's it. Electroencephalography. <laughs> encephalography. What it means is electric brain graphing. Okay. Um, so the brain has billions of neurons and each neuron connects to thousands of others. Um, communication happens between them through small electrical currents that travel along the neurons and through the enormous network of brain circuits, which are called neural pathways. And we know with neural pathways, so we build neural pathways when we repeat something that we're intently focused on. So if we're learning to play a musical instrument or playing a sport or a new skill on the computer or whatever it is, when we really focus on it and we repeat and repeat and repeat and learn, we're building our neural pathways. Until it gets to a point where you don't have to think so much about it. It's a habit, a pattern um, that our body just knows. And then we can build on that to make it stronger. Neural pathways are often described as rivers. So the more water and the more force, the more focus, the deeper and wider the river gets. So that's what we're working on tonight. Um, when these neurons are activated, they produce electrical pulses and the synchronized electrical activity results in a brain wave. That's a brain wave. <laughs> um, oftentimes the activity is strong enough to be detected outside the brain. So that's why you know, they have the electrodes on the skull and they're placed strategically to match up with different parts of the brain that have different activities and different um, jobs and processes. So one way that EEG brain waves uh, convey information is in their rate of repetition. Some oscillations occur at more than 30 cycles per second. That's pretty fast. <laughs> um, and these cycles are called frequencies and they're measured in Hertz. And Hertz was the name of the scientist who proved that they exist. Okay. So there are five levels or states of brain waves. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. So hopefully you can see this. I think we got it. Yeah. And I don't know if that's reversed, but you can see the, the path at the top is extremely busy. And then the next one is not as busy. And then finally you get to the one at the bottom and it's like a lazy sprawl, right? Those are the five states of our, our brain waves. So the really, really busy one is called gamma. And that's when we have hyper brain activity. Uh, it's great for learning and cognitive processing. Uh, the second one is beta. 
And that operates at a 13 to 30 hertz um, cycle or repetition. And this is kind of our default level of consciousness when we're awake and alert, okay? The third one is alpha, and that operates at eight to 12 hertz, so a little slower. And this is the state we're in when we're physically and mentally relaxed, um, where we can really deepen into meditation and heal faster. And it's kind of the optimal state for learning and growth and self-awareness. And that's the state we're gonna try and move towards tonight, where we are moving towards. The fourth one is theta, which is three to seven hertz. And that's when you're drowsy and just on the edge of falling asleep and you're kind of dreaming. So you're not quite awake, not quite asleep. And then the last one is a very deep sleep where you're not dreaming and that's called delta. Okay. So to get us into this alpha state, so right now we're in beta pretty much, unless the tapping helped. <laughs> um, we're gonna practice a couple of techniques from the Silva method. So Jose Silva was kind of a pioneer in mind management techniques in the 60s, I think it was. And his method has been taught to over 6 million students. And I've heard about it before, and then I just came across uh, a man that I follow, Vishen Lakai, and he is offering a, um, a master class in it, which I'm really tempted to take. So there might be more to come on this. Um, but basically, it's, it's techniques to manage our thoughts. So we're not trying to ignore the thoughts. We're not trying to be empty-minded. We are managing the thoughts and building neural pathways. The first technique is called the 40-day countdown. And it is exactly that. So 40 days, you work on counting backwards. So from day one to 10, you count from 100 to one. You might do this twice in the day. And days 11 to 20, you count from 50 to one. Days 21 to 30, you count from 20 to one. And days 31 to 40, you count from 10 to one. And what you're doing is building the neural pathway so that even though it's a shorter number of count, you get into alpha. So we don't have time to put 40 days of this into 45 minutes tonight, but we're gonna practice uh, one part of it so you get a taste of it. And there's nothing more about this technique. So I've just told you how you do it. If you are curious about it, you might want to take it on, map it on a calendar. All right, so let's, let's start with the 50 to one. And I think it'll take us less than a couple of minutes. So get comfortable in your seat, take a couple of deep breaths. And I'll start us off and I'll go at a moderate pace. And here we go. So 50, 49, you can close your eyes, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, you keep going. Keep breathing. And at 20. And I've gotten to one. 
And just open your eyes. Notice how you're, how you're feeling in your body and in your mind. And then let's practice another Silva technique. And this is called the mental screen. So you're gonna close your eyes. This is a visualization. Visualize a giant um, TV screen or monitor in front of you. It could be a flat screen on a wall, really big. It's turned off. Just kind of visualize that. And then cast your eyes up about 20 degrees. So eyes are still closed, but just kind of like you're looking up towards your eyebrows. Keep present with your breath. And now for the next five breaths, visualize the most delicious, fresh, beautiful apple. Look at how healthy and fresh this apple is. Beautiful color. Imagine how it will sound when you bite into it. Imagine how it will taste and smell. And then for the next five or so breaths, change what you're seeing into the most delicious looking orange, beautiful, vibrant orange color, healthy skin. Just study the orange, kind of anticipating it. Imagine yourself being able to dig your thumbs in and start to peel the orange and the smell. Imagine that first bite of the orange just bursting into your mouth. And then third and last visualization. Now on that screen, imagine that you're seeing the face of a loved one. And the face is smiling back, you're, you're sharing a moment. Just thinking about how wonderful this person is and how blessed you are to have them in your life. Seeing them right there. And slowly bring your awareness back to the room. You can open your eyes. Notice the state of your body and your mind. Now we're going to move into a guided meditation.
And this is one that I learned in the MBSR program I just completed, the eight-week program. It's called the M, sorry, it's the BBSTE. So body, breath, sound, thought, and emotion. And you can do this practice sitting as long as you're comfortable. If you've got a lot of aches and pains tonight, you can lay down on your mat. Just try not to fall asleep. <laughs> So take a moment to settle so that your physical body is feeling balanced. Shoulders are back, head isn't falling forward, you're just kind of nice and aligned. And close your eyes. And just for a few minutes, really tune into your physical body. So if you're sitting, feeling the weight of the legs or the feet on the floor, feeling the hips, balanced, sensing your spine, and your shoulders and your head. And just letting the body settle here. as if you were a witness outside your body, sensing sensations as they come and go. There might be areas of tension and there might be areas of ease. Just really acknowledging your physical body in this moment. Maybe bringing your awareness around your body and just thanking each part, even the parts that are tired or a little cranky. Being grateful for your bones, your joints, your muscles. Grateful for your organs. Grateful for all the systems that go along quietly inside. Grateful for your skin. And grateful for your brain and the electricity, the marvel of the brain and the mind. Next time you take a breath out, we'll take our awareness away from focusing on the body and bring it to the breath. And just take a few rounds of a deeper breath in and out. Just noticing the ebb and flow of the breath. It's kind of an open monitoring of how the breath goes, how your body responds to it, your physical body, your emotions your mind, just all paying attention to the breath. When you begin your next inhale, notice the beginning. Notice the breath rising. Notice the pause. When you begin the next exhale, notice the beginning. Notice the falling and the pause. Sense everything that's involved in the breath. So feeling the breath come in through the nostrils, nice and cool. Sensing your lungs, drawing the air in, your heart converting it into the bloodstream. The electricity in the heart. Maybe sense your ribs moving. Maybe sense the belly moving. Just being grateful for your breath and that you have 
the time and presence to be aware of it. Maybe also noticing how the mind wants to go somewhere else here and there. <laughs> it's okay. Bring your mind back. Bring your awareness back to your entire body now and the breath. The body and the breath together. Have a sense of spaciousness. Entire body and the breath inside the body and outside. Noticing points of contact, noticing points of no contact. Noticing any areas of constriction and any areas of relaxation. And the next time you breathe out, let's take our, aware our awareness to the next area, which is that idea of sound, so hearing. You may be in a quiet space at home but there's still sounds around us. Clock ticking, little traffic outside, neighbor's dog. Whatever sound you're hearing, let's notice the quality of it whether it's rising and falling, whether it's loud or soft. And you notice that we have a tendency to want to name a sound, put a story around it. If you can, maybe let go of that and just sense sound as a vibration in your peripheral. And on your next breath out, we'll move to our next area of awareness, which is that of our thoughts. So our thoughts come and go. They can be fleeting or they can be sustained. When we have thoughts that are repeating themselves, typically those are thoughts of the past. See your thoughts as if they were objects outside of yourself. And we could put a metaphor to this. So think of your mind as the sky, the palette, if you will. And think of your thoughts as clouds. Some thoughts can be charged with emotions. Some thoughts can be light or dark. Some move rapidly. Some kind of trail along. They can be heavy thoughts or gent gentle wisps of a thought. Maybe label the thoughts as thinking. Oh, there I am, thinking. Thoughts and emotions go together. Or just notice the thoughts you're having and if they affect you in any emotional way, if they um, make you agitated or if they calm you. And 
and then we'll back this up. So being aware of your thoughts and emotions together. And come back to noticing the sounds. Watching them come and go too. And bringing your awareness back to your entire body, the breath and the body together. sense of spaciousness, just openly monitoring whatever comes up. And then stay with your breath for a few rounds, just really soaking up the breath, drawing it deeply in, releasing it fully out. And then bring your awareness simply back to your body now. Start to notice the density of your body, the weight of your body, either sitting or laying. And again, just celebrating, appreciating this amazing body that we live in. Let your awareness be with gratitude and also as a blessing to your body and your mind and your heart. And then in your own time, slowly bring your awareness back to the room, sensing yourself either sitting or lying Maybe start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And you can open your eyes. Just take a few deep breaths, bringing yourself back. And filled with gratitude and calmness in those moments of peace that we alluded to in the prayer at the beginning. And what we've just practiced together is building a neural pathway um, to move us into a state where we're calm and relaxed, where we can restore, where we can become grounded. And the more we practice, the easier that's going to become to get there and the more bandwidth it'll have in our day-to-day -day lives. It's not just contained in a little bottle, it's in our brains. So thank you for traveling with me through into the alpha state. Um, my hope as always is that there's something in our practice that really resonates with you and that you write it down or you just remember it and try practicing it on your own. That's where the real neural pathways get built. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to hear how that goes for you. Uh, if anyone has questions about what we did, I'm happy to share my notes and um, encourage you to pursue practices that help you. So thank you for joining me. Namaste.